So let us have a, a recall. So what are the characteristics of a couple? So there are four or five characteristics are there, right? Positive sense. Right. So couple Result will produce. Resultant of couple is not zero. Right. Couple Independent. will always produce constant. rotation. Moment of couple is always constant. Right. Independent of so point. The resultant force. Equal and if they have. OK, so resultant force of the couple in any direction, it is zero. Therefore, couple will not produce translation. Being resultant force is zero, there is no translation. But the resultant moment of the couple is not equal to zero. Therefore, there is a rotation. Then couple is always, the moment of couple is always constant. It is independent of the point about which the moments are taken. Then two couples are said to be equivalent. Two couples are said to be equivalent. If they have the same magnitude and sense. So irrespective of the forces constituting the couple. So two different couples are acting on the body, but the magnitude of the couple, sense of the couple on both the bodies, it is same. You can see that those two couples are equivalent. Right. Then, what is the resultant of force system? How do you define resultant of force system? Force. The only force which can be applied uh, by removing all the forces. The net or combined effect of all the forces acting on rigid body. Net effect. Then, then what is equilibrium? Net the force acting on the body. When the net force is on the system mm -hmm. and the net torque on the system is zero. Right. Then what is equilibrium? The force that is required. The force which the brings body about the equilibrium. equilibrium is called as equilibrium. Mm, anyone? Anyone, please? The force that requires to keep the body in equilibrium or that brings the body in equilibrium is called as equilibrium. Right. OK. So we have divided engineering mechanics into three parts. So part A, it belongs to the basics, basic concepts. Part B belongs to statics and part C dynamics. So in part B, statics, there are four units, whereas in part C dynamics, there are two units, total six units. So unit one, resolution of composition of forces. Chapter two, resolution of forces that we are going to see today. So there are basically four fundamental principles which are very important in engineering mechanics especially in statics. So one is principle of transmissibility of forces. Then you have principle of superposition of forces. Then principle of moments. Then you have Verignan's theorem, which is very, very important. So Verignan's theorem is used to find the position of resultant of the given force system. The application we will see in the next chapter. Now, what is principle of transmissibility of forces? It states that if a force acts at a point on a rigid body, then it is assumed to act at any other point on the same line of action of the force within the body. Suppose if a force is acting on a rigid body at a point and that force will have some effect on the body. Now you can assume that that force can act 
at any other point along the same line of action, but within the body. Here, consider a body, rigid body. Let force B, force P, B acts at a point A on a rigid body. So this force will have some effect. That is, it tends to produce motion of the body in the direction of force. That is, in the direction of line of action of the force. So that is the effect of force on the body. Now, I am considering another point B on the same line of action of the force. Now, I will transfer this force F, which is acting at point A, to point B. Then the effect of the force on body remains same. So again, this force tends to produce motion in the direction of the line of action of the force. Means here what we are doing. The force which is acting at A is transferred along the same line of action to another point B, but within the body so that the effect of the force on the body remains same. That is principle of transmissibility of forces. Understood? Now let us consider another example. A man trying to push this box by applying force P at point A. So that is the effect of force on the box. <coughs> now I am considering another point B on the same line of action of the force. Now the man is trying to pull the box by applying the same magnitude, say P. Again, it will have the same effect. That means here, the force is transferred from point A to point B along the same line of action without changing the effect of the force on the body, known as principle of transmissibility of forces. Understood? Then principle of superposition. It states that the action of a given system of forces on a rigid body is unaltered, remains same, even if another system of forces, which is in equilibrium, is added or subtracted from the given system. So let us consider two different systems. So in one system, the number of forces are couples, maybe, or acting. So which will have some effect. Now consider another system which is in equilibrium. That means the resultant of that system is zero, right? Now when you add that system which is in equilibrium to the given system, or even if you subtract that system from the given system, the effect of this system remains same. That is the meaning of principle of superposition of forces. Means we are superimposing the forces which are acting in the system of equilibrium on the given system. Okay. So take one example. There is a body on which three forces are acting. I am considering a simple system having three forces. Now what is the resultant of these three forces on the body? Yes, anybody? 70 Newton towards the right. 70 Newton towards the right. 70 Newton towards right. So it is plus 50 plus 80 minus 60. So 70 Newton towards right. So this is the effect of the given system. Right. Now consider another system which is in equilibrium. So here two equal forces, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, collinear in action are acting on the body. So the resultant of these two forces will be zero. Minus 20 plus 20. We can say that the system is in equilibrium. When this system, which is in equilibrium, is added to the given system, what will happen? See the left hand side. In the given system, left hand side, we have two forces acting towards right. So it is plus 50 plus 80. Now, plus we are adding the another system. Therefore, here it is plus. And uh, which force is acting on the left hand side of the system which is in equilibrium? 20 Newton which is acting towards left. Therefore minus 20. So this gives you plus 110. 
so when you add this system which is in equilibrium to the given system you have a force of 110 newton on left hand side which is acting towards right similarly right hand side the given system you have 60 newton which is acting towards left so it is minus 60 and we are adding the system which is in equilibrium here 20 newton acting towards right on right hand side so it is plus 20 so you have minus 40 that means after adding the system which is in equilibrium to the given system of forces you have 110 newton acting towards right on left hand side 40 newton acting towards left on right hand side now what is the resultant of this new system of forces it is again 70, 70 newton towards right that means the system which is in equilibrium is added to the given system of forces then the effect of the given system remains same that is so the principle of superposition even you can subtract the system let us take the same example but now we are subtracting the system which is in equilibrium from the given system so on left hand side you have plus 50 plus 80 but we are subtracting therefore it is minus so here left hand side you have 20 towards left therefore minus 20 so 50 plus 80 minus into minus plus 20 that is 150 newton on right hand side you have here minus 60 and we are subtracting so here you have 20 towards right so it is plus 20 so minus 60 Minus into plus minus twenty, hence minus eighty. So in the new system, you have on left hand side plus one fifty acting towards right. On right hand side, you have minus eighty acting towards left. Again, the resultant of this system is seventy <coughs> newton acting towards right. That means the effect of the original system is not changing even after adding. Are subtracting another system which is in equilibrium. So this is principle of superposition of forces. Understood? Yes. Then principle of moments. It is applicable for a body which is in rotational equilibrium. What is the meaning of rotational equilibrium? The algebraic sum of the moments. of the forces acting on the body is equal to zero right that is the rotational equilibrium it states that when a body is in rotational equilibrium the sum of clockwise moments of the forces about any point is equal to the sum of anti clockwise moments of the forces about the same point see when a body is in equilibrium we are saying resultant is zero <coughs> which means the resultant force is zero and the resultant moment is zero right when i am saying resultant moment is zero means there is no rotation so it is in equilibrium now what is the resultant moment simply it is the algebraic sum of the moments of all forces about a point so when the algebraic sum of the forces is equal to 0 while taking algebraic sum i am considering anti clockwise moments are positive clockwise moments are negative right so anti clockwise moments positive minus clockwise moments is equal to 0 so this minus clockwise moments taken to the right hand side then sum of anti clockwise moments is equal to sum of clockwise moments i am rearranging the terms right so for better understanding see this example so it is a force system is acting on this body and this body is in equilibrium okay here the resultant force is zero because here pair of forces are forming couple the 60 newton forces so this f1 and f3 they are forming a couple again pair of 90 newton forces these two are forming a couple means simply there are two couples are acting on this body so the resultant force is zero right and say it is in rotational equilibrium so when it is in equilibrium 
you can say that the algebraic sum of the moments of all forces is equal to zero about any point. Now let us consider point G, that is the center of gravity at a distance three meters and two meters from AD and AB. You can consider for that matter. You can consider any point. Okay, not necessarily the center of gravity. So being it is in rotational equilibrium, the algebraic sum of the moments about point G is equal to zero. So m1, m2, m3, m4 are nothing but the moments of f1, f2, f3, f4 about point G. What is moment of f1? What is the sense of moment of f1 about point G? What is the sense of rotation? So it is anti-clockwise. 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 Anti Therefore, plus f1 into what is the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to point G? It is three meters. Three right? meters. So plus f1 three. into three. Now, what is moment of f2? What is the sense of moment of f2 about point G? It is clockwise. Clockwise. Clockwise sense. Clockwise. So clockwise. Minus. So negative. F2. Right, negative F2 into perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to point G. Two meters. Again, it is two two meters. meters. So minus F2 into two. Similarly, moment of F3. F3 is forming anti-clockwise. Anti so plus F3 into perpendicular distance is three meters. Three so meters. F3 into three. Moment of F4. F4 is forming clockwise moment Clockwise. minus f4 into perpendicular distance is 2 meters two is meters. equal to 0. Now f1 into 3 plus f3 into 3 is equal to I am taking this f2 into 2 f4 into 2 right hand side. So this minus becomes plus right. In the values you have sum of anti-clockwise moments. These two are anti-clockwise moments am I right? Plus means anti-clockwise here is equal to now these two are clockwise moments, right? F2 into 2 and F4 into 2. As you have this 180 plus 180, 360 Newton meter. Here again, 180 plus 180, 360 Newton meter. The sum of anti-clockwise moments is equal to sum of clockwise moments for a body which is in rotational equilibrium that is principle of moments understood yes sir yes sir yes sir the next very glance theorem so it is very important the basic application of very glance theorem is to determine the position of resultant of a given system of forces especially when the system is non concurrent or parallel force system because for concurrent force system we know that the resultant always acts at the point of concurrence am I right if it is parallel force system or non concurrent non parallel force system then to determine the position where the resultant is acting we use Verignan's theorem so it states that the algebraic sum of the moments of all forces about any point in the plane is equal to the moment of resultant of those forces about the same point. In short, if a force system is acting on a body, say number of forces are acting on a body and that force system will have some resultant. Now you consider a point anywhere in the plane and you take algebraic sum of the moments of all those forces about that point. That algebraic sum must be equal to the moment of resultant of those forces about the same point. Understood? No. Take an example. So there is a body on which two forces are acting. I am considering a very simple system for better understanding. So two forces F1, F2 are acting on a body. Now what is the resultant of these two forces? 
Yes. Twenty Newton. Twenty Newton towards right. Twenty Newton right. towards right. Twenty Newton towards right. Now I am considering point A somewhere in the plane. The sense of moment created by F one about point A. It is clockwise. Clockwise. Sense. So clockwise. F1 is rotating in clockwise sense. So I am saying that is clockwise M one. And what is the sense of moment created by F two about point A? It is anti-clockwise. Anti Say that is M two. As per the statement of Verigna's theorem, algebraic sum of the moments of the forces about point A is equal to moment of resultant about point A, right? About the same point. Algebraic sum of the moments of F1, F2 means algebraic sum of M1, M2. Being M1 is clockwise, I am taking minus. M2 is anti-clockwise, I am taking plus. So it is minus M1 plus M2. Let us consider the perpendicular distance from the line of action of these forces to point A is two meters. So what is moment of F1? Eighty into two, right? Product of magnitude of force into perpendicular distance from the line of action. Being it is clockwise, minus minus eighty into two. What is moment of F two about A? It is anti-clockwise. Plus magnitude of F two is sixty. Again, perpendicular distance is two. So minus eighty into two plus sixty into two. That is minus forty. Means forty newton meter clockwise. So the algebraic sum of the moments of F1, F2 about point A is 40 newton meter clockwise. Now, what is the moment of resultant of these two forces about point A? Moment of this resultant means 20 newton. Moment of this 20 newton about point A. What is the sense of rotation? 40 newton minus 20 multiplied by 2. Yes. Minus 20. Clockwise. So the sense of rotation is clockwise. Therefore, minus 20 into perpendicular distance is again 2. So, 40 Newton meter clockwise. That's what Verigna's theorem states. The sum of the moments of the forces about any point is equal to moment of resultant of those forces about the same point. Understood? Now, graphical yes, representation sir. of moment of force. Let force P is represented by the line AB. Say the length of line AB is the magnitude of force P and the direction of line AB is the direction of force P. Now let us consider a point O in the plane. Say the perpendicular distance from the line of action of this force P to point O is D. Now, what is the moment of force P about point O? It is P into D. Right? Now, join yes. OA and OB. So, we will get a triangle OAB. Now, what is the area of the triangle? It is half into base into height. Base into height. So, half into base is AB. And height is OM. OM is the height of the triangle. Right. So that is half into AB is represented by P and OM is D. So half into P into D. So taking this 2, which is in denominator to the left hand side, you will have 2 into area of the triangle OAB is equal to P into D. But what is P into D? Moment of force P about point O. That means the moment of force about any point in the plane is equal to twice the area of the triangle formed by that force about that point with respect to that point. Are you getting me? Yes, For example, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, so sir. there is force P. 
it is acting in the plane now i want to find out the moment of this force p about point c then what i have to do simply join the extremities of this force with point c then you will get a triangle to find out area of the triangle multiplied by 2 that gives you moment of force p about point c this concept is used to verify verify or to prove verignan's theorem now let us verify verignan's theorem for concurrent force system means the lines of action of the forces are passing through a common point i will consider a simple system having two concurrent forces p and q acting at point a now by drawing lines parallel to p and q i can form a parallelogram then the diagonal of this parallelogram represents the resultant of these two forces that is parallelogram law of forces if you remember two if two concurrent forces are represented by the two adjacent sides of a parallelogram then the diagonal of the parallelogram gives you the resultant of those two forces passing through the point of intersection of those two forces so this we are going to study in third chapter while finding the resultant so now here r is the resultant of p and q right now i am considering point o in the plane you can consider this point anywhere in the plane remember but now i am considering this point on the line cd produced now join oa and ob now graphically the moment of force p about point o is twice the area of the triangle formed by that force with respect to that point means twice area of the triangle oab that we have seen in the last slide right so the moment of force p about point o it is twice area of the triangle oab similarly you tell me now what is the moment of force q about point o moment of force q about point o twice the area of triangle aod right so it is twice the area of the triangle o a d similarly the moment of r resultant about point o it is twice area of the triangle o a c o a c a c right now consider these two triangles triangle o a b and a triangle c a b so these two triangles are standing on the same base lying between two parallel lines means yeah, the yeah. areas are same they are equal right so area of oab is equal to area of cab now see the parallelogram abcd in this the triangle abc or c as per this cab the triangle cab and the triangle cad those these two are having area equal right in a parallelogram area of the triangle cab is equal to area of the triangle cad that's what i have written here area of cab is equal to area of cad means ultimately the area of the triangle o a b is equal to area of the triangle c a d right now moment of force p plus moment of force q about point o moment of force p is 2 into area of the triangle o a b moment of force q is 2 into area of the triangle o a d but we know that the area of triangle oab is equal to area of the triangle cad so i'm replacing oab with cad plus 
twice area of the triangle OAD. Now taking two common triangle CAD plus triangle OAD. Now you tell me the area of the triangle CAD. That means this area plus area of the triangle OAD. That is this area. So when you add these two triangles, you will get area of the triangle O A C. Am I right? So yes, it is two into yes. area of the triangle O A C. But what is two into area of the triangle O A C? It is the moment of resultant about the point O. Where Ignan's theorem is proved. The moment of P plus moment of Q about point O is equal to moment of R. R is the resultant of P and Q about the same point. Understood? So that point O can be considered anywhere in the plane. So this theorem holds good. Now let us verify Verignan's theorem for parallel force system. Let two forces P and Q, which are parallel to each other, acting at points A and B as shown. Let R is the resultant, which is acting at point C. Now I am considering point O in the plane, somewhere in the plane. Now B, the forces P and Q, they are acting in the same sense they are parallel to each other simply p plus q is equal to r right r is the resultant so r is equal to p plus q now you tell me in this figure let us assume that the magnitude of force p is the same as the magnitude of force q then what will be the position of this resultant where the resultant will act between p and q exactly at the center of line at the center a, of line a b exactly at the center why in the center why it is so why it will act at the center that is because to balance the moments of these two forces about that point. Here P is forming anti-clockwise moment and the Q is forming clockwise moment. So in order to balance these two moments, being the magnitudes are same, here moment means uh, product of magnitude into distance, right? So in order to balance, being the magnitudes of forces are same, these distances AC and CB must be same. Therefore, it occupies the middle position. Suppose if the magnitude of Q is greater, then you will find that the resultant will move towards Q. Right? If the magnitude of Q is more, why again to balance both the moments? Here, moment of P, it is P into AC, moment of Q. It is uh, clockwise Q into CB. As the magnitude of Q is greater, here the distance will be less. Are you getting my point? Means the resultant will adjust its position in such a way that the moments of the forces are balanced about that position. If the magnitude of force P is greater now, then you will find that the resultant will move towards right, that is towards force P. So in short, you can say that the condition P into AC must be equal to Q into CB. Understood? So by taking PAC to the right hand side, you have minus PAC plus QCB is equal to zero. Now, moment of force P about point O. Simply, it is P into perpendicular distance, right? That is OA, P into OA. Moment of 
force Q about point O, Q into distance OB. Moment of resultant about point O, R into OC. Right? Now, as per Verignan's theorem, moment of P plus moment of Q about point O. So, moment of P is P into OA, moment of Q is Q into OB. So, P into OA plus Q into OB. Now, distance OA can be written as OC minus AC, right? I am replacing this OA with OC minus AC. Similarly, distance OB can be written as it is OC plus CB. OC plus CB. So I am replacing OA with OC minus AC, replacing OB with OC plus CB. Then we have P into OC minus P into AC, plus Q into OC, plus Q into CB. But we have minus PAC plus QCB is equal to zero. Therefore, you have P into OC plus Q into OC, taking OC common P plus Q, but P plus Q is equal to R. Okay. So this is uh, proved now. Moment of P plus moment of Q about point O is equal to moment of resultant about the same point. So while considering this point, you can consider it anywhere in the plane. And uh, this Verignan's theorem is applicable for concurrent force system, parallel force system, and even general force system also. Means non-parallel, non-concurrent force system. Understood? So let us have a quiz. So according to the principle of transmissibility of forces, if a force acts on a rigid body, then its effect remains the same when it acts at. Right? It has to act within that body. If it is outside the body, the effect of that force on the body is zero. Then uh, roll number 18. Yes, sir. What is the correct option for question number two? Principle of a moment. For a system which is in equilibrium, the sum of clockwise moments and sum of anti-clockwise moments are equal. That is principle of moments. Then rule number 25. Yes, sir. What is the answer for the third question? For a given system, if another system which is in equilibrium is added or subtracted, then the effect of the given system remains same. Sir, option B. Option B. Right. Principle of superposition. From figure one. Option number A. Option number A. Right. So force can be applied in the same direction at any other point along the same line of action, but within the body. So that is B. Then uh, the principle of superposition of forces. The effect of the given system of forces does not change by adding two equal and opposite. Linear forces. Collinear forces. It is concurrent as well as collinear. Because as per principle of superposition, uh, superposition of forces, if you add a system or subtract a system which is in equilibrium, then the effect remains same. That means if two equal 
and the opposite forces are acting at a point then it becomes concurrent force system right so it is concurrent force system which is in equilibrium and if the forces are acting along the same line of action these are collinear forces and this system is also in equilibrium so hence both are applicable it is concurrent as well as collinear it is option b algebraic c, sum c. of the moments about any point is equal to moment of the resultant about the same point the sum of clockwise moments is equal to sum of anti clockwise moments it is principle of moments right and again here sum yes. of moments about any point is equal to moment of resultant no it must be algebraic sum by taking anti clockwise positive clockwise moments negative determine the resultant moment about point a so there is a small correction in the figure instead of centimeters you consider it as millimeters okay rakshit you tell me what is the moment of 15 newton force about a about point a sir option a option a right so moment of 15 newton force about a is clockwise right it is rotating in clockwise sense so it is minus 50 into perpendicular distance is 15 and a moment of 75 newton about a it is creating anti clockwise sense plus 75 into perpendicular distance is 6 and a moment of 6 it is creating clockwise sense minus 60 into 12 that gives you please mute your mics it is minus 1020 newton millimeter so it is 1.02 newton meter b it is minus clockwise Rule number seventy-one. Yes, sir. What is the equilibrium of the force system shown in Figure three? How much time you will take? Uh, Ninety. Ninety-five clockwise. Ninety-five clockwise, right? So here the resultant force will be zero because only couples are acting. So the resultant moment, sixty newton anti-clockwise. So that is plus. Here seventy five again anti clockwise, so plus seventy five. Whereas here forty is clockwise, so minus forty. So we have plus ninety five. So it is ninety five newton meter anti clockwise, which is the resultant. Therefore, equilibrium is ninety five newton meter clockwise, opposite sense. so that's all for today in the next class we are going to see the resolution of force